Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video. So, over the weekend, I bought another peach, guys. And Chris doesn't know about it, but I thought, do you know what, on this occasion, I'm actually going to pre-warn you guys, just to see Chris's reaction before we get to the yard, uh, once we get to the yard, because it's pretty beat up, this one. Let's spin the camera around, show you it, head to the yard, and see what Chris thinks. So I bought an absolutely trashed Nissan Juke. It is, it is what it is. And I think it was very, very reasonably and fairly priced. But this is what you're looking at. Every panel on it. You can see all the various screws. See them big screws holding the uh, front bumper in. Look at all them dents. Still no wall, guys. So much better without it. Anyway, diesel, all runs and drives all right. Let's get it to the yard and show Chris. Here goes nothing. What we bought, a 65 2015 Nissan Juke diesel had quite a few smart repairs oh, done on it. Oh, my. You, you ain't... Yeah. Oh, dear. I've started up one. Have a listen to it, honestly. Oh, look it first. After you've had a look round it, it's... Been to war, hasn't it? It has been to war. But in a minute, I'll explain where I got it and how much we got it for. It's like it's had new brakes on it, Rob. It has had brand new rear discs and pads, new front lower arms, new drop links. Um, well, they play bumper cars in it. It's had a few other little bits and pieces. But they've yeah, actually... Put... Yeah. Tech screws. Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? They've actually given up driving. Oh, they would have owned it, yeah. Fair enough. Wait, when I tell you in a minute, oh, I'll show you now, my fingers. That's what I'll give for it. Yeah, it's not dear. No. Problem is, is, is that ever going to be a nice car? Do we want to put our name to it? I have actually had a bit of a... That's why, when I look round it, I always think, oh, can we have a few quid out of that if we didn't do yeah. it? And I think that this is an ideal candidate for something. I don't know whether to leave it till later in the video, but tell you, but... I think this would be quite a nice one to actually see if I can clean some of it up. Definitely spin it up. Get a lot of the marks and dinks out of it. Actually, possibly even do something with that front bumper. Refit it properly. Yeah. And actually auction it. What, co-part? Yeah. Yeah. Because, honestly, you wait... Yeah, oh, there's the keys. You've only got to have them on yeah, your Yeah, I don't need... No, start it up and listen to it. I've just driven it. I picked it up from Sheppey and I drove it home. At oh, the yeah. Weekend. I don't, yeah I don't. It drives lovely. Yeah, yeah. And it's got everything on it. Stop, start, these, yeah. you know, the blind spot bits on the mirrors, sat nav. And again, diesel. Got loads of history with it. Loads of MOT. V5, two keys. Yeah. Doesn't look like there's any money in it, though. Chuck your foot on the uh, clutch, push that start button. Yeah. Straight up on the button. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it's probably one to flip, isn't it? Yeah, the only yeah. thing inside that's broke is the armrest. Oh, all right, yeah. But it is in the back, so right. maybe I can do something with that. But yeah. I just thought, you know, like when you're doing something in a workshop, yeah. and we never actually ever mention this, you know when I say, I'm going to leave you with Chris and pop out, this is the sort of stuff I can, I'll be getting on with outside yeah. Yeah. while you're doing yeah. that, isn't it? So Yeah. No, I'd... Uh, I'd... Mate, it... It'd end up needing a complete repaint, it? needs wouldn't it? a full repaint, I yeah, think, apart we, from the roof. And what, the thing is, Rob, we've got a backlog of ones for paint anyway. We have. All little bits like We're this. Not. I can whip down marks and get one of them. Chuck yep. it on, can't I? Yep. I didn't even look in there, but... No. Yeah, I... Uh, I mean... If it was nicer condition, it's quite an easy repair, isn't it? Well, wing uh, and a door. The door, 
door of repair, wasn't it? Yeah, but I was actually thinking, when I bought it, I thought, right, ideal for an auction. We're not going to go backwards on what I'm paying for it. But if we did decide to repair it, do you know how I'd do it? Even if it took three or four months to do, I'd try and find the bits in colour. Yeah, I think, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, though, with... I mean, when you look around it... It's had the wheel arches screwed on, yeah, hasn't it? I'd, would we want to put our name to it, selling it? I mean, most of our cars go... All, all our cars go to subscribers, really, of the channel. Instagram followers, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Do we want to... No, not really, but I, thought, slow, I think you'd better be you'd be better what you say. Just as a profit in this, just I mean, make it as presentable as possible. You know, make it look as nice as good as it can do, and um, and I think um, not necessarily Copart, but if not Copart, offer it to a few other traders. Yeah. See if we can have a profit. A cheap car. Yeah. And if not, Copart it may be. I don't know. I'm gonna, I mean, if two doors come up in colour, it'd smarten it up. It would smarten this side up, makes it just that bit of damage the other side in the front bumper, yeah. doesn't it? But all like this here, and that there, someone's sort of Brillo pad that, yeah. you could spin all this up, and it would look so much better. Well, it would, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it would. I'm and probably going to have a go at I it. I wouldn't bother promise. with the doors. No. Because they're, they're done, aren't they? But, right, I think... I'm just going to run through with you. I'm just going to run through and tell everyone off the bat straight away now what we paid it for it and how it come about, and then we'll decide what we're going to do with it. Well, that was some pretty quick going there, guys, with the finance company, because when I bought this car at the weekend, it actually come to us through A2 Tyres. It was one of their customers. Luke reached out to me and said, would you be interested in this car? It's pretty substantially damaged all around panel damage, but mechanically completely sound. He told me the situation with it, guys, and the situation was this car was actually on a five-year finance agreement taken out in 2019. So still had a good few months left to run on it and said the customer doesn't want to drive anymore. Are you interested? Now, this is coming up theft okay, odometer okay, finance and legal status, you can see there, is also coming up okay. So they worked very, very fast there. And the situation is, when I turned up at the garage, the people was there, I transferred them the £2,000 that was left owing on the car, and they transferred it to the finance company in front of me. So I knew the car had been paid for in full. And just Monday morning, look, it's all been cleared, and it's been updated, the legal status and finance of the vehicle. So this one is completely clear, and yes, we paid £2,000 for it. I'm just going to see when they actually purchase the car. As you can see, the Car Vertical app, uh, that car vertical now has an app it is very very user friendly a lot more easier to use and you can see down the bottom there's a little message button there as well so if you get stuck with anything so i'm just going to quickly go to that's the model and specifics and there we go ownership change 0919 and that's when they bought it on a five-year agreement so probably it only had a few more months to run again if anything was wrong on the front page there all of those green ticks would be highlighted in amber. Guys, I want to thank Car Vertical for the continued support on the channel. And off your check, use the code up on screen now, or there's a link in the description. Right, I know this is probably going to sound a little bit crazy, because I do want to do some polishing. But I want to get it cleaned first. And I know that sounds crazy, because it's going to need cleaning after. But we're actually in credit at the car wash. And I'm going to take full advantage of that because I want to know how bad it is underneath all of these scratches and all the wheels all up under the arches. It's thick mud. I want to get it out. You can't touch it with a polisher until the paint's clean. So let's have a quick wash done on it. It is just going to be the outside. We'll get it washed, have a look, see what it looks like. And then we'll crack on trying to get this one tidied up and make a plan of what auction we're going to put it through, whether it's Copart or somewhere else. Let's get it done. Honestly, guys, I know you'll find it hard to believe, but there is a method in my madness here. I really did want to get all of that grot and mud from under the wheel arches off and around all the plastics as well, because if you hit it with a mop, you're just going to ruin your mop head and end up scratching it even worse. So best to let the guys just rinse it off. 
I actually think we'll all be in agreement here. It looks a hundred times better. Where I stood outside and actually videoed it, I automatically pulled it forward and started vacuuming it out. So I'll just let them finish. But just getting all of that, all of that mud off and cleaning those wheels up has made all the difference. And you can see, honestly, this is all just bush rash. All of that will clean up. I think we'll tidy up the edge of that door and we'll actually pull that wing out as well. Get the slide hammer in there and just pull it back round and do something with this front bumper. I've noticed that the clip's under the bonnet there. In fact, let me open the bonnet. I was to quickly open the bonnet and then I was chatting to Chris. All four poppers are missing and it's had a couple of cable ties put in it. But I don't think you guys will be able to see through there. But the bumper bar hasn't actually taken a whack. It's, it's in the correct shape. It's right behind the bumper. So no idea why they've put these tech screws in there. I reckon where it's had a little bit of a smack here and it's popped that out, it's popped these off and it's come out of its clips there. This, yeah, really I need to take it apart and that's not helping, is it? Because if these have been put in after that was on there, of course you're never going to get it back in because these are going to be in the way, aren't they? are going to be holding it. So I think you can see just before they washed it, I said, can I borrow that jet wash? I just blew the dust off of it because it was really, really dusty under here. Show you the other side. They couldn't wash them dents out of it. It actually don't look that bad now, does it? I don't think it looks that bad. The back end of it looks fine. Wants a wiper on it. I think I'll get quite a lot of this out. Let's get it in the yard and try and make it look as nice as we can. I'm gonna concentrate on just this quarter panel. So all these scratches and little marks, we're gonna have a go at getting rid of some of them. Straight in here with a bit of masking tape, guys, just to cover up the plastics. You've only just got to touch those plastics, the normal black plastics that are not color coded with a mop and it just makes them go white and it is nigh on impossible to get the compound out. So that's what that was for. Right, I think we will all be in agreement that it is a drastic improvement. Definitely. But after I've done it, guys, I walked around here and I thought, do you know what? This is going to be a better panel to show it, isn't it? So there's the quarter. And there's the door. So exactly the same sort of damage with that bush rash. But this is going to be a better example, isn't it? So I'm going to just do that quarter panel. Then we'll untape it and compare it to that door. I've got a funny feeling that's going to come up lovely. And you're really going to notice it this side. So let's do that. So a bit of G3 on the mop. And of course, as I previously said, lots and lots of water. So I don't burn through the paint. I had the earmuffs on there, Chris just popped out. You can probably see he's welding and grinding in the background. That's why he's got an apron on and that's why I was wearing the earmuffs. It is quite loud coming out the workshop door there, echoing, but all polished up. Let's get it cleaned up, untaped and have a look at it. Well, I cannot believe that, guys. It speaks for itself, doesn't it? Let's stand half and half in between there. That is absolutely incredible. Don't get me wrong, there's still some light scratches in there. If you wet flatted that, you'd probably get every single one of them out. But look at the difference there. I reckon I'm getting good at this mopping, you know. I reckon I'm getting good at it. Let's get that door done. I'm not going to time lapse anymore. I'm going to get this door done, but there is some... They're not actually, they're not actually through the paint, but there's your next comparison. This door to that door, quite a lot of these are not going to come out. Like, I don't think that one there is, but all of this, it's all got to come out, hasn't it? Chris actually come out there, he went, I can't believe that, Rob. Look at that. Let's get on with it. It's never going to be perfect without paint. You can see there is minus little chip, uh, quite a few little chips all around it but I mean you could touch them in but you I don't really want to try and hide anything we do want to leave it as it is I'm not going to record 
any more of this. I'm actually just going to get on and do it. But again, if you really look here, you can still see there's light scratches. It is far from perfect, but it's like black and white compared to what it was, guys, isn't it? And when you stand back here a little bit, look how poor that looks now compared to that door and that quarter. Even you can see the yellow cloths down there, how bright they are, and then how dull and horrible it goes. I've just straightened up the edge of this door with a pair of Chris's little grips, and I'm probably going to get Chris to actually get in here with me with the slide hammer, because he'll get it about right. I don't want to pull it out too far, and then it starts catching on the door, etc. So I'm going to continue to clean it up, and then we'll, uh, we'll actually pull that out a little bit. And we're going to have to undo that to try and get that bumper to fit. But like I said, I'm going to do the majority of it now off camera, i.e. the rest of the cleanup. So I was going to wait for Chris here and he said, Rob, you've got nothing to lose. Get on there, mate, and give it a go with that slide hammer. I've popped the bonnet there because I almost forgot to take the battery off it. It'd be my luck. I'll start pulling and the airbags would go off. But yeah, just pulled it out there with a hook on the slide hammer, wound it on and then straightened the edge of it up with a pair of pliers. And of course, tap down the high spot whilst holding out that bent part and it come out all right. Well, mate, quite surprising that, Rob. It is very surprising. We won't mention anything about my panel beating skills. I literally oh. just got the slide hammer in there, pulled it away so that it was level and then tapped in that high edge just to smarten it up. That has tidied it right up, it hasn't it? It has tidied it right up. I didn't want to hide anything on this car no but you know like those massive eight mil bolts that was in the front yeah i've swapped them out yeah. for black screws yeah won't come out do you know what shall i be completely honest I forgot that bit that's the first time i've ever seen it you forgot that i bit. completely forgot but it. to be fair all that bush rash has gone yeah it looks a lot better the only thing is robert it still has oh and i went to mark's yeah rear wipe and it works it's still, it's got a lot round it, hasn't it? It has got a lot round it. And I think... What drives this... lovely, this car. Honestly, drives fantastic. But we've just got a backlog of stuff needs panel work and paint work. Oh, yeah, that, I mean, people are going to see this, aren't they, well, in, we in just, the background? We've got other things parked other places, haven't we? We've just got never-ending. And that, that would turn into... A complete repaint. It would, wouldn't it? But no, I, I, I mean, if someone wants to buy that and they buy a door for it and a if they be paid, they can use that car as it is. Oh yeah, nothing dangerous about it. I've changed all but the. But we had a tally screws. up the other day. We've got eleven projects around us again, haven't we? Which we said we weren't going to get like that again, and all no. of a sudden, no, I know no. not all of them have been on the channel yet. No, but we, you know, do we? We've got plenty of stock. Right. I think I let's think, not get into it too much. I think we go with what you said. Well, it's. I think that's the best thing to do. So we're going to pick up. I think put that down co part. Down co part, and we'll and just, pick up yeah. with a live. It'd auction. be an interesting video, wouldn't it, to see how much you know, if we if we can if we can make a little bit out of it. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see, won't it? Hundred percent. And what can you earn? What can Rob earn in a day polishing a turd? <laughs> We'll leave that in. We never swear. Chris, that, it's not really swearing, is it? No, but you know that, it, would, it would be quite interesting, wouldn't it, to see. Do you know, know that what? car, though? There's nothing hidden there. It is literally, oh, it is all panel damage, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. The one thing I am going to do, which, again, I neglected to notice till I just whipped down the breakers in it, I still haven't fixed that armrest. Right. But it is fixable. So I am going to fix that in. We're going to get this list. What do you think that would... Or it doesn't matter, does it? But what do you think that would make? And on art, I think we're going to make the same money out of that car after me spending the day on it, putting it through Copart, as what we would if we bought all the bits, had all the paintwork done. I think we're going to end up with the same amount of money. And that's the truth. Yeah. I've been honest. We pay two grand for it. I, I, we've not spent a penny on that today apart from a few materials, I reckon that car's going to make between three and 4,000 quid at Copart. It's the way to go, isn't it? it it's uh, a no-brainer, uh, isn't it, it? It is our business, and that is what oh, we do. Oh, that's right, but yeah, yeah. You could make that a bit nicer and put a new back number plate on it, but 
It, it's going as it is. Yeah. I think it's perfect. Yeah. Right, no more waffle. Let's cut in once the auction's live. Sounds good. So straight down to Copart, they actually let me drive in and said, yeah, unload it round the back there. Just leave it there and leave the keys in it. I did speak to a guy and said, are you going to image that now while it's clean? And he said, yes, he is. So we'll pick up later. Sold 1200. Your watch item is next on the block. So here's ours. 1850. 19. 1950. 2000, we got our money back. We need another 100 pound for the fees, 90 quid. Bonus time. I can't believe that car's not making quite a bit more money than that. 2,533 participants. Sold on approval. We've got it on approval, so let's see if we can knock them up a little bit. Unfortunately, guys, it does take a couple of days after the auction where you counterbid the buyer and then they come back whether they stick to original bid or whatever they do. And I've said it time and time again, when we bid on a car and we win it, we won it. We, are, we never ever increase our maximum bid. We stick to our guns and when they counter us, we always click, click original bid. So after two days of backwards and forwards between Copart and the person that bought that car, guys, they stuck to their original bid. And you know what? We actually let them have it for 2,000 pound. So I spent all day on that car dropped it down there and cost 90 pound to sell it. So I'm a whole day out of pocket and with the diesel and the fees, probably about 130 quid out of pocket as well. So the moral of the story is you can't win them all. There is still some bargains to be had down at Copart because I still think that car was a little bargain. If a bodywork guy gets hold of that car, he'll have all that done and have that turned around and retail that car and get good money for it. But like Chris said, it needed a front bumper really, or the holes needed filling in. It needed other little bits and pieces. And we just didn't want to get involved in it. We want to get on with the projects we got. We got the Audi TT sitting out there. We got the Volvo that I can see in the background. And we've actually got the bits for that. So we need to get on with that. So there it is. You cannot win them all. And we actually lost a little bit of money out of that one, but you've got to keep smiling. It is the name of the game. You've got to be in it to win it. Would I think about buying another one of them Nissan Dukes again? I would probably question it before I bought one because I genuinely thought that that car was going to be really good news. And how wrong was I, guys? Hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little something from it because I certainly did. Don't forget, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Hit that thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. Of course, it shows your appreciation. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram at Selvage Rebuilds, Chris on his personal one at Selvage Rebuilds, Chris. We'll see you all very, very soon in the next one.